Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Hyatt Buick GMC in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm really happy to be here. This is my first video at this dealership, and they're very friendly here, and uh, I'm just uh, very grateful that they're allowing me to look at this 2015 Buick Enclave. Now, this is one of those type of vehicles, whether you sell uh, Buicks or not, that uh, when you have a used one on your car lot, if you're a car salesman, uh, it's pretty easy to sell. And um, so the Buicks, the Buick Enclave, I guess it's kind of like the Maytag man, where it's not a really hard job of selling uh, this particular vehicle. It has so many features, it's comfortable, and um, well, if you've never test driven one, test drive one immediately if you're in the SUV market. But anyways, let's check it out. Um, this one is like a silver color, of course, as you can see. And um, so here in the front, we've got a very classy looking grill. And we also have HID projector headlights here. And they um, it, basically the projector tube uh, projects the light uh, at, a, at a further di at a far distance and the HID is a really uh, powerful light source behind that that projector system kind of looks like an eyeball but it is uh, it's, it focuses the light um, where you want them to be we also have some some driving lights down here that there are a strip of LEDs down there Now this vehicle is sitting on 20 inch coated aluminum wheels and 20 inch wheels um, as you can see it matches well in this vehicle. Now the large diameter wheel uh, allows you to get better gas mileage when they're aluminum of course and it also gives you an easier ride because um, a, a bigger wheel it tends to roll over bumps a little bit easier and um, so I don't know if you're familiar with uh, like say if you were to push a hand truck or something you know or a cart that has little tiny wheels on it or like a piano um, they get tripped up real easy uh, so the larger wheels um, on things like that you'll notice that it goes over things easier so that's kind of the, the basic principle behind the the 20 inch wheel and you can see uh, this isn't some real massive boat like SUV this is a very reasonable sized SUV but wait till you look at the inside the inside is very roomy and comfortable and you will probably think you're in a massive SUV so looking at the back here you can see it has the uh, two the, the dual exhaust here with the v6 engine and you also notice these little circles here across the back that is an ultrasonic uh, backup sensors so back basically when you're backing up uh, into a parking spot or whatever if there's something behind you it's gonna make it make like a beeping noise and kind of let you know hey there's something back there you might want to check and see um, you know how close you are also in addition to that you've got this little lens back here that's part of the that's the backup camera and I'll show you that when we get inside that's another level of um, safety as far as uh, backing up and also you have a pretty good size uh, rear glass to see out of. So you've got all those uh, safety features there. Now one of the features uh, this vehicle has, reach in my pocket here, is a remote start. Now there's the key fob and there's the key. And some people ask me what does fob stand for? Fob is not an acronym for anything, it's actually a word. So there's your, uh, your key fob and there's your key see they're separate there and so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up the vehicle has to be completely locked so I'm gonna just go ahead and make sure it's locked it beeps at me let me know it's locked and then this button here that has like the uh, the circle type arrow um, basically you just push and hold it until the vehicle starts Okay, so you push the lock button here, make sure it's locked, and then we almost immediately push and hold the uh, remote start button. All right.
right so let me go ahead and now that it started I'm gonna go ahead and open up the tailgate by pushing and holding this button here it is a uh, automatic lift gate and this is really handy for um, you know if you're walking to the vehicle and you've got a you know grocery cart full of uh, groceries you can start up the vehicle and it can be the climate control can start regulating the temperature in the vehicle as you're walking up and opening up the the tailgate and loading up your stuff so uh, that's a really good feature that's a very uh, handy feature to have especially in an SUV when you have a, a you know a, possibly a car load of people everybody can start getting in they have the air conditioning running they don't have to wait for you to load up the groceries that kind of stuff so back here um, this particular vehicle has uh, these rubber slush mats in place and I highly recommend these uh, these type of rubber mats for any vehicle especially an SUV and uh, because they protect the carpet really well they're easy to clean they hold spills very well if your feet are um, have mud or dirt or water on them or, or um, snow that's going to melt in there it's going to catch all that inside the rubber mats and um, so when you get a new vehicle ask the dealer if they have some in stock if not you know order them immediately and get them in your vehicle as soon as possible and typically the uh, factory um, the factory slush mats are usually some usually sometimes cheaper than the aftermarket and also a bit of better quality and they, they're made to fit exactly the vehicle so um, as you can see here now in this bag is actually the uh, the carpet mats that it would originally come with um, so they have been upgraded which is imperative in my mind so so basically uh, underneath all this stuff and it's a little bit of a pile of stuff You've got a some more storage under here, so you can put stuff and um, you know out of this out of sight, out of the way, that kind of thing. Also underneath that this little cover here, I'm running out of hands, but there's a little uh, bolt there that you can unscrew, which will lower the spare tire, which is under here. And also back here you have a 12 volt power supply and you also have some different tie downs and stuff um, here on the sides put like a, um, a net or whatever people have different ways of kind of uh, securing stuff now these things right here are kind of like grocery bag hangers you can hang a grocery bag there to keep it from uh, basically you know rolling around or whatever these seats will also fold down you notice these have these straps here this is the third row seat and basically if you need to fold it down you can just pull this out and just kind of push it and it'll both go down now that seat will have to go up slightly more um, for it to go all the way flat but it will actually go down all the way flat so if you're picking up something at Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever and you got a big box um, you can put that down you can also put the second row seat down and uh, so you can really create this into like a van as far as the room goes uh, to bring home stuff and you can see there um, on the second row you've got a cup holder and stuff on the third row let me go ahead and pull this back up using this strap like so so it's not that hard um, you know moving it up and down you just want to pay attention to the seat belt here make sure it doesn't get caught behind the seat when you put it back and it is a uh, 60 40 split so basically you can um, you know adjust your uh, cargo capacity ratio to your passenger capacity so you can have a variety of passengers and cargo however you need to have it all right, to lower this, uh, this automatic lift gate, right up here is this button. And uh, of course you can do it by hand if you wanted to, but right here's a button, you just push that and make sure this bag is out of the way. And uh, so basically just push that and it's gonna come right on down. And it's gonna secure itself and all, away you go. Here's the, uh, the fuel cap, which is on the driver's side, which is very convenient. And basically, um, when you, you can unscrew this, it has this little plastic cord here, and it hangs on this little place right here, so that way it doesn't dangle down and, and, and mess up your paint on your vehicle. And this is just a push to open and push to close right here like that. All right, so right now it's still locked, so let me, uh, let me get the key back out of my pocket and unlock it with this button here. So, let's 
check out the second row here. Here's the inside of the back door. You've got some wood grain accents. It's kind of like a um, like a grayish color, I guess you can say. The interior color is tan, and then you've got like a light gray here, which is convenient because um, that's kind of a wear spot there. So it's, it makes sense to make that darker than the rest of the vehicle. You have a cup holder right there on the door, so that's pretty cool. Got a little storage pocket at the bottom, power window, and there's your handle and all that stuff. You have a speaker in the door as well. There's your threshold. Now the seats back here, uh, they do have um, their nice high quality leather. They also have the uh, perforations here in the uh, in the, the seat there, and that that helps out with the um, basically. You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced this where you get into a vehicle that has hot leather seats or something and you've got shorts on and your skin kind of sticks to the seat or whatever. This one kind of helps with, um, you know, uh, dissipating that heat or that, um, you know, just make giving it a little bit more comfort when you get in and out of the vehicle. This does have the latch system for car seats here to where you can, um, you know, you can attach your, uh, your car seat here as well as the anchors in the back. And you can see one piece second row floor mat here is um, you know designed to uh, it doesn't move because it's secure with these little tabs here that's another added feature of the uh, the factory OEM uh, the factory Buick or whatever name brand uh, uh, floor mats so you got some charging ports here you've got a power supply there you've got some volume control with the ability to put some headphones on and uh, listen to music privately if you wanted to. Now these captain's chairs, uh, really convenient. Uh, children or small, basically small people can, can jump up in there and then walk through between the seats and jump in the back, like so. Um, they can also, uh, if you wanted to, um, this is how you actually move the seat up. It kind of sandwiches up like so. I'm trying to do it one-handed, so. But you see how it kind of sandwiches up, gets out of the way, and then you've got this ability to, you know, step here on this hard plastic there, and then you enter the third row, in which um, you could probably seat three there um, with not a big problem. You do have some vents there on the top with some lights, so even the third row passengers uh, have access to air conditioning, which is always a plus. All right, so all we got to do to put the seat back is just push, push it. You just push it back there, and then you just push this down like that. And you also, on the second row, have a... I'm going to go ahead and hop in here to show you. You also have a... This is the dual-pane panoramic sunroof. So here, with the shade closed, it looks like that. You do have a slight amount of light coming through. But let's go ahead and open it up. And then you've got the whole sky to look at. And to me, that kind of stuff helps out with claustrophobia and stuff like that, where on long trips, it kind of makes you, makes you feel a little bit more comfortable in addition to, you know, the normal looking out the windows. Do you have a little storage pocket there for you know kind of putting stuff while you're sitting back here now i'm just kind of sitting in the seat um and i'm about six foot tall and my knees have some room now um, i'm noticing the floorboard the seat is a little low for me um if the floorboard was lower or the uh the seat was higher that would probably be a little bit more comfortable now i probably run out of headroom but uh, my seat my knees are a little bit high so uh, this is probably you know they'll be fine for uh, fairly short trips long trips might be a little bit of a little bit of a cramp uh, now you can um, recline the seat so I'm reclining it now which is a lot more comfortable for me uh, my knees go a little bit forward more but um, I think this would be the position I would assume in a long trip a little bit more reclined just kind of hanging out here in the back seat. So let me get out so you can see what I'm talking about. Right here, and 
I think both of them are reclined now, so I guess you won't be able to tell the uh, tell the difference. But it is a little bit reclined there. All right, so let's move on. Now, looking at the side mirror, you can see that little symbol right there. Hopefully, you can see it right here. Um, that is a lane departure warning system to where if somebody's in your blind spot, there is a uh, like a, a sensor here on the side of the vehicle to where if somebody's in your blind spot, it will alert you, um, especially if you're getting ready to put your turn signal on and change lanes. So that's a very, um, that's a very good feature to me, um, especially if, you know, if I'm traveling and I'm talking and, you know, having a good time with the family. Um, you know, sometimes you may not see the vehicle in the, in the blind spot. All right, so here's the inside of the door. And this one does have the premium Bose sound system. And, uh, which sounds awesome, by the way. It's hard to convey that over on the video camera, but you gotta experience it for yourself. And you can see the driver's door has a ton of little buttons and stuff. You got your door lock controls, um, your second row power windows, your front row power windows, uh, your power folding side mirrors. You also have your left and right adjustable mirror adjustments there. So that's all that stuff. And this also right here is for your presets for your seat. Now it does have an, an exit mode. That's what that little thing means to where if you when you turn the vehicle off the the seat you can make it to where the seat goes back the steering wheel goes up and kind of everything kind of gets out of your way to get out of the vehicle and then when you get back in and you start it up it's going to go back to that position of comfort that you had before to where you can reach the pedals and and all that good stuff see over the steering wheel that kind of stuff now you've got a a bright cut um shiny Buick threshold there it does have a uh, protective coating over it, but you can see it is like a uh, stainless steel color um, with some shiny accents there with the Buick. And you know, just something that came to mind check out the reliability statistics on Buick, they are top, top chart, they're top in the charts right now on reliability. And um, so, I think they're like second place, uh, like all manufacturers as far as reliability. I think you, uh, and that's one of the reasons what made me decide to uh, seek out a Buick dealership is because um, I'm all about some reliability. And uh, so when I found out that, that Buick is, is right there almost at the top of the list as far as reliability, I was very attracted to, uh, to do some more videos on the Buicks. All right, so the... Um, the remote start will only run for a certain amount of time, so it's turned off now. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in the vehicle. And even, let's say the remote start was running. I would still have to put the key in and turn the vehicle on and turn everything on. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart it back up. And turn the fan down. It is a pretty warm day, but uh, so I'm going to keep the air conditioner on, so hopefully it doesn't interfere with the camera too much. And you notice it's kind of noisy here in Myrtle Beach. It is kind of like almost like a bike weekend or something where we got a lot of motorcycles. You don't hear them right now, but um, it's kind of windy and noisy outside. So let's close the door and see what we experience. pretty quiet it kind of it, it shuts out all the all the um, you know the background distractions and stuff and it kind of makes you feel like you're in your own little world here and um, and that's good so you can stay focused you're not just easily distracted by a passing motorcycle or uh, you know some some kind of um, you know loud noises now of course you're gonna be able to hear you know ambulances and fire trucks and stuff like that so you can get out of the way but, um, you know, it does give you some level of, um, you know, relief from your ears. So here on the steering wheel, you will notice it has a wood grain, a wood um, accent here at the bottom, as well as the top right here. And these are the places that typically um, get the most wear uh, on steering wheels. Also, 
it has a leather wrapping which is you know your comfort zone there as well now the wood is not uncomfortable it is very grippy it looks it looks um slick because it's shiny but when you touch it, it actually grip it's a little bit more grippy than the, the leather itself so when i go up here you see it kind of catches uh, it is a very grippy um you know surface to grab and that's good for when you got you want to have control of the vehicle all right so the leather wrapping the wood this is a heated steering wheel and um, so let's start here there's a bunch of buttons on here so let's start on the left side and speaking of the heated steering wheel we do have um, your button for that right here and uh, so I could turn on that it'll warm up the steering wheel and right the rest of it is all for your cruise control so basically when you turn your cruise control on there um, you can cancel it here you can set it here you can resume or you can you know accelerate or deaccelerate here and here on the right side you've kind of got two layers of um, of buttons the back ones right here are the volume so I can turn the volume up on the radio I can turn it down I can hit the source button which will take me through AM FM satellite radio that kind of stuff and um, you also can change the stations here and here and you can skip through things uh, it also has a CD player so you can cycle through your CDs um, tracks that way as well this button it's kind of combined into one some vehicles have them separate but this is voice recognition and your phone so basically when you have your Bluetooth phone paired with the system you can push that button and you can say call Joe or, or whatever whatever the name is that's in your phone book and it'll call them you can also receive calls by driving normally once you're if your phone's in the vehicle and it's paired to the Bluetooth system somebody calls you you start hearing the radio will dim out and you will hear ringing through the speakers you could push that button and you just start saying you just say hello and you start talking to the person as if you would if um, the phone is actually up to your ear and it works quite well usually people cannot tell that you're actually talking through the system in the vehicle they just assume you're talking through with the phone up to your ear and uh, I was kind of surprised at that because the, the placement of the microphone is right here so your microphone is, is in a very well placed uh, spot also um, of course you can hear them through the speakers so you can turn the volume up and you know you can hear them and all that stuff so it's pretty neat uh, it's a very good safety feature and a lot, I know a lot of people have this mentality of if a phone's ringing you have to answer it and so if you are uh, driving along and your phone rings um, if you have to fumble out and find it and dig it out and try to you know swipe your hand across the screen you might have it upside down and all this stuff trying to answer the phone in time and all this time you are losing focus of what's important and that is what's in front of you as you're traveling 60 70 miles an hour so the the ability to just push a button and just start talking is a massive safety feature um, on vehicles and I'm really glad that uh, more and more vehicles have that feature all right so you have your turn signal here also uh, your di your dimmer switch as far as your um, your headlights you can dim your headlights there and um, and there's your gauges you do have like a green background to the gauges which is pretty cool especially at night and um, you got your miles per hour there your gas gauge in the middle your voltage are there to the far right and your temperature there to the far left and uh, it does have a uh, digital compass there you see it says NE that stands for the vehicle facing northeast as six miles on the odometer brand new 2015 so that is to be expected now over here this is your headlight controls it does have an automatic feature um, so right now it's on automatic you can turn them completely off here you, your when you turn it there is your parking lights and there's your headlights now if you turn it there um, you got to make sure you turn it off before you exit you know before you leave the vehicle now if you put it on automatic it'll automatically turn off so you don't have to worry about killing your battery uh, you do have the ability to adjust your dome lights turn the dome light off also adjust your your um, your, the lights on your dash here 
and you can also turn your ambient light off which the ambient light is pretty neat at night time and uh, so maybe one day I'll be able to do one of these vehicles at night so you can see what I'm talking about all right up here this is pretty cool it says enclave and that little recession there which is a neat feature neat uh, you know cosmetic feature you also have this little dome right here and that is the light sensor that tells the computer uh, tells the vehicle whether to turn the headlights on and stuff like that and we'll also up here I have this little pocket now I need some help I need somebody out there to explain to me what that pocket on the dash that that um little storage bin is for because it seems unlikely that i will put my cell phone in there because you know the dashboard gets very hot in the summertime especially even in the winter time when the sun's directly shining on it and um so i'm not kind of curious as what people actually put in those dashboard storage compartments so if you can just help me out with that i'd appreciate it uh this is a felt lined um you know you do have to reach up pretty good and and i, I guess you could put your sunglasses on in there or whatever but you know maybe it's not as hot as i think it is but anyways that's that you also have a pretty cool uh analog clock here you need to adjust it with a little button above it and down here we've got your cd player just to the right of that is an auxiliary input for playing off of an iPod or some kind of portable device. And then you've got your your touchscreen here. So now not only is it a touchscreen on the screen, but also these buttons on the side are kind of touch. They're not push click type buttons. Um, you just kind of push them and you're not really pushing them, you're really just touching them. They're like soft touch buttons, I guess. That's I think that's one of the uh, the things people call it so um, I'm gonna hit home here Let's see here all right. all right so here on the screen is uh, your your temperature outside feels a little bit warmer than that to me and um, and this right here is your close your clock and then you've got these icons and the icons are similar to a computer in that you, they do different things and they take you to different screens. Once you go into that screen, you've got more uh, options. So it's kind of a, um, a never-ending, you know, source of information here on the vehicle. Now, now playing takes you to what the radio is doing, and of course you got presets there at the bottom, and you can adjust, um, you know, to you know, like say, uh, so I want to go to that particular radio station there. You can take me there. Um, I'm going to go back to home navigation this will take you to your navigation screen and um, so there's your map there and I like the way the words have a highlighter or like a, a white uh, surrounding around the words so that way they kind of pop out a little bit more they are a little bit small uh, the words on the screen and um, so I don't know if there's adjustment for that but uh, you know I would prefer them to be slightly larger and of course that might interfere with the maps I'm not sure so I'm sure they have it uh, designed a certain way for a reason all right so you can have different views here I'm gonna choose that one let's see oh, that one there okay so you can you could divide it up have different information have uh, information on the right and left uh, makes the, the navigation screen a little bit too small for me though All right, so let's get out of that. Let's go to home. All right, let's go to destination. Uh, this is where you would actually put in a specific, you can put in a specific address here, uh, point of interest, um, previous destinations was really handy if you go to different places frequently. You can have a whole address book of different places if you wanted to. You can pick a point on the map. Uh, you can create a, a trip, a plan a trip, like this, like three or four diff different destinations and you follow a certain path. Uh, that kind of, um, or you can put in a uh, latitude or longitude, um, you know, for certain uh, pinpoint on the map type stuff. That's a little bit above my my head as far as trying to figure out that, but uh, and it could be that you get off a of GPS or something. I'm not sure. And then you've got the soft touch buttons. There, some of them are kind of um, 
you know, redundant buttons to where, you know, you have the same buttons on the screen, but you do have them as well. And then you've got your, your volume here, tune through the stations here, and that's pretty much the same, a repeat of what you have on a steering wheel. And uh, so down here, we've got some buttons, and um, let me go here. This is basically, um, I just want to show you that when you push these, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm actually, I'm going through something here, but I'm, I just want to mention that when you push these, push them and kind of let go, because if you sit there and keep pushing them, it, it seems to not work. So, uh, so you just kind of push it and let go, and it'll recognize it as a touch. So, so I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna just kind of cycle through you, so you can see what I'm talking about on this side. So I'm going through the options here, just to get the, to show you that the, all kinds of different information that you can get on this screen. And. Um, the, the button this is the the menu button here this is the, to choose what you want and this is kind of to go back to the um, the normal screen there the where it shows the compass and the odometer um, here's your lane departure warning and your forward collision um, warning uh, buttons here so you can set it to where it's near or far um, your collision alert and I would prefer it far um, myself and as you can see the lane departure warning is on all right and it has a dual zone climate control actually it has a tri-zone really because you've got some climate controls um, you know for the people in the back but anyways uh, for the the purpose of this um, to start off with you have the ability to sync both the driver and the passenger and it'll show up sync right there so if you wanted to unsync it, you just start adjusting the passenger side separately and it'll unsync it and then that way you can, the trap passenger can kind of fine tune it. And now if you push rear, this will um, go to the, you see it says rear, now you can adjust what the rear temperature is. Now if you got kids or something back there, you can adjust it, the, their climate for them. If they're like, I'm hot or I'm cold, you can adjust it and fine tune it for them. And then you hit your rear again and it gets out of that mode there. And uh, you have the fan speed here in the center. You do have an automatic mode where you just push auto, you adjust the temperature and just let it do its thing. Uh, you can also fine tune it to where you can have air blowing in specific spots and um, you have the rear defrost you can recirculate the air which I'm going to do now uh, with the air conditioning and that way you get the the highest amount of cooling in the vehicle speaking of cooling this one has cooled seats here in the front and heated seats as well uh, the heated and cooled have different levels so like so I'm going to push it again and it's going to go to middle and then low so pushing it again goes off the first press is, is full blast same thing on the passenger side. Here's your button to um, for your lift gate. Now you can turn that off if you wanted to. Um, so you know if you don't want the lift gate to be opened, uh, you can just turn it off like that. The automatic lift gate. I'm sorry. This is for a trailer tow. Uh, once you have a trailer tow package um, installed on the vehicle, you push that, and that keeps. Uh, the vehicle in certain gears it holds the gears a little bit longer and it may not even go in overdrive a lot of times to accommodate for the power it needs to pull a trailer this is the, um, your traction control you can turn that off I would recommend it's automatically on when you start the vehicle but I would uh, recommend just not even ever turning it off unless you get stuck and you need to like basically spin tires or, or um, you know kind of do some stuff that you don't normally do and there's the rear wiper um, there there's a little storage pocket there it's not really big enough to put a cell phone or anything I'm not sure what that's for I guess just change or whatever you have a USB input there um, that is for you can charge stuff uh, with it but you can also play music through the sound system here on the radio to the right of that is a power supply 12 volt now here's the shifter you got nice uh, big cup holders right there but here's a shifter and um, basically I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see what the backup camera looks like 
Also, you heard that beeping sound. That indicates that the uh, backup cam, the backup sensors are now active. So if something um, is behind me and I'm backing up, getting close to something, it's going to kind of beep at me. Now I'm going to turn a steering wheel so you can see that those lines are moving. And that is the ability, that gives you an idea of the trajectory of the vehicle, but also um, the width of the vehicle as you're backing up. It is a very, it is an estimate. So uh, I wouldn't rely on that on 100% and just, you know, full blast back up using that. But it, get, it is a good guide. So now I'm going to put it down in drive. And when I'm in drive, it does have a low feature. So like if you need to uh, use some engine braking or something going down a hill, or, or if you just need some extra power, um, it will um, lower down the gear from which whatever gear you're in. It is a six-speed transmission. So you have uh, quite a bit of gear ratios to choose from. And speaking of that, let's put it in drive. And I'm going to um, show you this button here on the side. This button is for um, to cycle through the gears. So basically you can uh, you know, change the gears there. So if I put it in low, I can cycle through the gears. Let me just show you what it looks like up here. Um, if I need to, you can see where I'm in low and I'm cycling through the gears. I don't know if it's actually going to drive, if I start off in six gear. Um, <laughs> Uh, it seems unlikely that the transmission will allow you to do that, but it's allowing me to push the button. Um, I'm thinking it's it's um, there's a limit to that, and most people, vehicles will have a limit to the range um, because once you get out of a certain range on the gear ratio, you're risking damage to the transmission and the engine, so it probably keeps you in a certain range. But anyway, that's that's what these buttons are for. All right, so this armrest right here this slides back and it also you can, I'll show you that in a second but this also has this little um, this little storage pocket right here and you can put stuff in there now one thing I'm noticing um, there's no power supply or anything in there so it's just to put stuff in there say your cell phone or um, junk I guess you know so, um, so that's just kind of stuff to quick access stuff that you can access in a second and you know right where it is and so back to this sliding back you have the storage pocket here and this is also um, this is a good place to put cell phones or whatever but this little thing comes out if you you know want to move it to the side and then you've got a power supply in there you also have this really deep pocket or storage compartment and um, you know it's gonna get cluttered up so that's part of the reason for this to cover up all the junk and you still can access stuff quickly here and it does have the ability to um, you know remove it and get out of the way to get your other stuff you also have this little place here um, so where wires can run down into this second compartment and go to that power supply which is white so it's easy to see this also closes up so you can cover up your junk all right let me slide that forward take a look at this massive glove compartment it is comes down pretty slow uh, there's no lining or anything it is just plastic so um, so I guess it's easy to clean out but it is pretty good size close that up and you can see the quality of this vehicle it's got the stitching here on the dashboard um, there's a lot of soft touch items the seats are super comfortable and uh, overall roominess I mean I've got you know, legs sprawled out uh, does have the essential foot uh, rest there for the left foot which is is essential for me and if you can see that it's got the left foot there um, and I, I don't know you know maybe you feel the same way maybe you don't but uh, that that right there is a huge plus of vehicles if it doesn't have that then you're kind of your foot's kind of like you know there's no support for the front of your foot so it kind of gets fatigued after a while it's in an unnatural position but this is a natural position here alrighty let's check out the rear view mirror now this is an auto dim rear view mirror so basically when somebody's behind you with their bright lights on it will dim itself to avoid blinding you with their bright lights you could turn that feature on and off with that button right there to the left 
Um, you also have OnStar, which is a uh, which comes in this vehicle that helps out with all kinds of emergencies and information stuff like that. Now these buttons here are for a garage door. You do have to pair them with a garage door system, but they uh, you know so that way you don't have to carry around a garage door opener. You can just pair it with that and use that to enter in uh, your your garage door from a distance. And then you've got these lights here left and right and this little thing I think that's a little ambient light at nighttime either that sometimes those are also um, temperature sensors I'm not really sure what that one is and there's the control for your sunroof so like I was showing you before you got a sunroof in the back this one actually you can open up so I'm gonna use the button here to open it up so you can see what I'm talking about and it pops up a little turbulence avoider thing up here in the front you can also vent it like that if you wanted to just to get a little bit of air and if it's just kind of too much light you can close it up it does still allow a little bit of light now another thing I wanted to mention um, on the seats which are very comfortable and um, easy to get in and out of and the vehicle has a good height for that as well but on the side of the headrest you've got this little adjustment here so you can adjust it let's see if I can get a good angle so you can see what I'm talking about you can adjust it in and out so you can get that really right comfortable position and also um, you know it just has a safety feature uh, the you know the closer the headrest is to your head in a collision um, a rear collision the better so um, those are all things to consider let's take a look this way here let's see what it looks like in the back all right let's take a look under the hood it's beeping at me let me know that the hood is up feel around to open it has this little thing right here you just reach in like that number there and as soon as you release it it's gonna pop up because it does have the um, the gas piston there that's gonna lift it up for you and get it out of your way and you see it has the um, the emblem there in, embossed into the, the roof lining there hood lining but uh, but check it out um, and I guess on this vehicle it's not a big deal. I'm a little bit, you know, disappointed on some of the sports cars that have a lot of plastic. But I mean, you know, this is a this is not really a sports car or anything, so I can understand uh, having a lot of plastic covering everything up because, you know, it's not something you really it's not the type of vehicle where you're popping the hood and checking everything all the time. Anyways, it's um, they're reliable. You just drive it and you get the oil changed and you're good to go. And of course your dealer will uh, let you know if there's anything that needs you know some scheduled maintenance that needs to happen so here is the 3.6 liter v6 it is a front wheel drive vehicle with a six-speed transmission and uh, it has a uh, feature called vbt which really really revolutionized uh modern engines with the fuel economy and power that you can get in a modern engine um, and vehicles uh, pretty much across the board so if you're not familiar with VBT, I do have a video um, of an engineer explaining what VBT st what stands for. It's called vari variable valve timing. He also goes into some all the, the details. So if you're into the, all the details, uh, search my channel for um, Ask the Engineer Student what is VBT um, or just what is VBT, that kind of stuff. But anyways, um, let me close it down, which is fairly easy. All right, I'm here at uh, Hyatt Buick GMC in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I really appreciate them uh, allowing me to spend some time with this vehicle and really uh, see what the uh, modern, comfortable, luxury SUV is all about. And um, so if you have any questions or comments, anything to add, anything I got wrong, 
uh, or uh, I missed out on. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of features on this vehicle that you may know about. If you drive one of these every day and you want to comment on that, uh, please let us know in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you could help support my channel, um, I'm trying to uh, increase the quality and quantity and um, and frequency of the vehicle, uh, the, the videos that I make uh, for your information and everything. So if you could uh, help out with the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And, um, you know, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.